We've had a big breakthrough in the world of magic squares of square numbers, a um, uh, intense area of research I am, have a close personal connection with, and I will show you the new breakthrough in a moment, but to fully appreciate it, we need to recap the current state of the art um, Parker Square attempts. Um, and I'm gonna try and show you the dichotomy of magic squares of squares in a nutshell. So first of all, I wanna show you two squares. Two, 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 three, eight, one, one, seven, four, three, three, nine. And as is tradition, if we square all of these numbers, we get a magic square of squares where every single row adds to the same number, every single column adds to the same number, one of the diagonals adds to the same number, this one does not. So, it might be quicker just to mark in what doesn't work. Everything works apart from that diagonal. Oh. But it is a big improvement over my Parker square. So I had a very similar thing where one diagonal didn't work, but I had repeated entries. So you can see there's two 41s, there's two 29s, there's two ones. I mean, to my um, credit, this was eight years ago. I don't, I don't, I don't want to call it the Parker, Parker square, square because, because it, it doesn't, doesn't work properly. properly. Like, oh, oh, the, the, yeah, that's, that's a, a classic, classic Parker, Parker square. square. A lot of people have tried since, and this is pretty much the best that has been done since then. This was sent in to me by uh, Chai Zhu Heng. That's good. Uh, I think it's incredible. This is the absolute best one I have been sent. I would like to give an honorable mention to Jaron Wakely. One, two, three, four. That's deeply pleasing. Gets extra points for that. 1006. One, four, three, six. And again, we square all of these and we have a semi-magic square. So all the rows work, all the columns work, one of the diagonals works, this diagonal doesn't work. So this is the one that's missing. It's not quite as nice as the hang square. How come? Well, this one's got smaller numbers. If there's a competition, like a tie break, smallest, nicest numbers wins. So the hang square is out in front in that regard. The Wakely square is still quite nice because this diagonal does work if you do it with modular arithmetic. So off the top of my head, if it's mod 3,026,892, just looking over there for a second, uh, th that diagonal works as well. And we did a previous video a couple years ago about using modular arithmetic, using finite fields uh, to come up with solutions for th this Parker square problem. So now this is the absolute best we have. And this is after nearly a decade of people throwing some pretty intense, very clever programming and um, computational grunt the best we can do, roughly. I'm sorry if someone else has a better one and I've forgotten it. But let me show you something from over a century ago. 56, 34, 8, 59, 10. Finally, three. This is an eight by eight magic square and it has the double property of both being a magic square now, before they're all squared. These aren't magic squares if that we took the squares off. This one is a magic square with just the numbers. And if I squared every single one of these, it would still be a magic square. It would be a different magic square. Absolutely phenomenal. This was discovered by someone called, I'm not gonna try and pronounce this. It's got a lot of Fs in it. Wow. Pfefferman. Now just so we're clear, these were discovered in 2024. So this is breaking research. And um, Jaron did this in uh, 2021. So it's actually been a little while since that one was found. This one, 1890. And do the diagonals all work on that one? Yep. It's ridiculous. What, and, and they found two of them. They found another one in 1891. And now I'm not going to write this one out because it's 128 by 128 numbers, but I'm going to bring it in on my laptop. So this is a magic square from 1905. It's 128 by 128. Look at the size of this thing. Look at this, there's 128 numbers in every direction. That's absolutely ridiculous. So, but it works. This is a magic square in every single direction. It's a magic square if you square every single number in there, still a magic square. And it's a magic square if you cube every single number in there. Like just in, absolutely ridiculous. Like this is just a level of like magic square, like a powered magic square. 
which is beyond my comprehension. And it, it, it makes one think if a magic square can be created that no matter what power you raise it to, it works. Yeah, well, that is a great question. The really, really good question. And we can answer that now. We have the answer to that because there's been a theoretical breakthrough. And I didn't realize that's what this video was about. Genuinely, that's what it's about. We now know, we now know, spoiler, you can make a magic square for any given power. So we tend to call the power D, I guess for the dimension of the magic square, but that's not strictly true. So for D equals two, that's what we're trying to do here. This one works for D equals one and D equals two. This one works for D equals one, two, and three. They're like multi magic squares. But what I find very surreal is how on earth can people have been putting out multi magic squares over a century ago by hand? We've since invented computers. And so this is the case, just so we're very clear. This has been cracked for D equals one and two. So they're all to the power of one, all to the power of two. These ones are both D equals, only D equals two. We don't even care about the D equals one case and we can't do it. And they don't work. And they don't work. <laughs> like, so. so to this day, the three by three for the squared case remains elusive. Despite our best efforts, a lot of people working on it. Whereas 100 years ago, they were knocking out eight by eight ones and 128 by 128 ones with arguably far more impressive properties. And this comes back to what Tony mentioned in a previous video. So Tony did a phenomenal bit of work. It's a great video. You should definitely go and watch it. I get a lot of emails from people who say, oh, why don't you just set up some algebraic equations for all the values and then solve them? And Tony basically did that. And you end up with this um, two-dimensional surface, but it exists in eight-dimensional space. Uh, Brady tried to name it the Parker surface, which I can report has not caught on. And the point that Tony was making is, as you get bigger and bigger squares, so this is now an eight by eight, the number of things you can vary in this is eight squared. So if you've got some square, and we'll just say hypothetically, if that was an n by n magic square, you've got n squared options of things that you can alter. Now actually one of them is kind of forced based on the others, so it's actually n squared minus one, but it's roughly n squared options. And so as squares get bigger, the amount of freedom you've got to make them goes through the roof. Whereas the requirements stay quite small. So all that you need is all n rows have to work, all n columns have to work, and the two diagonals. So they're the diagonals. So actually, uh, 2n plus 2 constraints. So your constraints are going up a lot slower than your options, which means as the squares get bigger, it gets way easier to find them and to generate them, which is why 100 years ago, people were making these work, but for quite big ones, whereas now we're at the smallest non-trivial case. And we're up right against the difficultiness because here, the moment you've got two numbers, the third one's forced. You've got no freedom. Whereas here, you can have several locked in and you've still got plenty of other numbers in that row left over that you can tweak to make everything work. So you've just got so many more options here. You've got far fewer options over here. And in Tony's video, they showed that we're running out of options to find a magic square of squares that's three by three, which works. Tony showed on the, um, uh, the Parker surface, if we're gonna do that, where all the solutions must exist. So if there is a valid solution, it's on there somewhere, and it will be all integer numbers, and he showed that there are finally many curves which could contain it, and they'd found over 300 of them. There may be more, but there's not infinitely many. And once you exclude those curves, you've only got finitely many sporadic points left over. And Tony was very despondent because uh, you know what's finite? Uh, uh, zero, none. So if there are infinitely many, we're like, okay, we're in with a chance to find something. But if there's finitely many, not only does it mean eventually we might check them all and run out, but it also means there could just be zero of them. All we've proven is it's finite. And so zero is still a valid case. The surface that parametrizes magic squares of squares, the Parker surface, has only finitely many of these rational or elliptic curves. However, Tony did conjecture, based on your fantastic questioning, Brady, what about higher magic squares? Like, so Euler in the 1700s found a four by four magic square where they're all square numbers and that works. And so Tony in the video conjectured, oh, hey, um, maybe for bigger magic squares, 
they always work. So maybe for squared values, at some point, any magic square bigger than that, you can definitely find one where they're all square numbers and it works. Or for cubes, maybe there's some point where above that they all work. He couldn't rule out some of them not working, but um, he thought that might, um, it might be true. And it turns out he was right. So the big breakthrough is someone watched Tony's video and decided to prove it. And they did it. We've got, I've got the paper here. I'm gonna, I'll bring it out. So here it is on the existence of magic squares of powers. And so they managed to prove for any power D, so if you think of some number D, there is a size of magic square such that a uh, magic square with all D powers does exist, but not only does it exist, it also exists for every size bigger than that. So for any, so there's some N for which all N's greater than that, you can definitely find a magic square of D powers, which kind of we knew because we knew that the reason why Tony was quite happy speculating that might be true is once they get big, they get easy. So we knew big is easy, and now we've managed to prove all big are easy. We knew small are difficult. What we don't know is where we go from one to the other. So somewhere there's, well obviously we know the difficult line is between three and four, because we've found four, we haven't found three. We don't know where the impossible line is. And so in this paper, not only did they prove that for any D, they then took the case for D equals two, which I'm very emotionally attached to, and they rolled it back to see how low they could get it. Could you get it down to a three by three? And so I can show you their equation. Okay, here's their breakdown we've got, which um, looks a little involved. It just means for various values of D, and you split into the odd and the even cases, they're subtly different. This is all split out to show you what's possible. And then if we just look for D equals two, we get if, for the even magic squares, we can start, they start definitely working from 112. And for the odd magic squares, they start definitely working from 135. So actually from 134 up, they all work. 134 is bigger than three. But then they piece that together with two other results. They got one result that covers everything from 50 to 140. So now we're down to 50 because that overlaps. And they got another result that takes us from 64 all the way down to four. This is the this is the size of the square when the powers are two. Yep. Right. So four. Four. So we now know, cutting edge theoretical mathematics, that there is a working Parker square for any size magic square four and up. And their proof came all the way down, came racing down and ground to a halt exactly one before the one that we care about. Did they rule out three? Nope. They haven't ruled it out? Nope. They've done everything else but. <laughs> so we now have the breakthrough that's answered all our questions, except for does a three by three magic square of squares exist? Oh. So that's where we're at. What did they tell us about other powers and things like that? Like, uh, it's, so for each power yep. that you can raise to, there's, a diff there's obviously a different threshold, smallest possible. Yep. How small are some of those? So some of them get re well, the thing is there's a difference between what we can quickly prove for certain and what takes a bit longer to work out in detail. So I can say very quickly, cubes definitely work from 191 by 191 up. Now there are a bunch below that that do work as well, but they're not guaranteed to all work. But from size 191 by 191, they definitely work. And actually, if you wanted to, you could probably chip away and get that down a fair way. There'll be, there will be some lower threshold. We just know that for certain. And they didn't chip away at all of them. They've just managed to prove, I mean, the hard part is proving such a threshold exists. And all they've done is prove they exist. And they've not actually found any magic squares, which I think is hilarious. It's not a constructive proof. They just show in the existence of different thresholds. And they've shown there's definitely, not only is there definitely a threshold for like squares and cubes, there's definitely a threshold for every possible power. So for every possible power you can think of, there are infinitely many sized magic squares that work for that power, but there is some smaller size above which they all work. Matt, I feel like you should be putting more of your time and resources into finding squares that work for multiple powers. <laughs> I, I, I find them quite impressive. The, they are, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I they mean, that's, that's still the holy grail, three by three square. Yeah. But I think, I think maybe that just doesn't exist. Now, well, I've got an idea. So. The first person who put prize money on this was Martin Gardner in 1996. And he put $100 up. 
in 2010, the Magic Square website that we've all been using, which is great, put up a thousand euros, 14 years later. Brady, it's now been another 14 years. And every 14 years, the prize money's gone up by an order of magnitude. I think we need to put out a bigger bounty on finding a working one. If someone can find, I'm not including disproving, if someone can find a working three by three with all squared numbers, I think there's a $10,000 bounty on hunting that down. US dollars? US dollars. US dollars. US dollars. I'll just have to make some very low budget videos for a while. <laughs> but if people want to email Parker Square Prize at standupmass.com, it's not going to go to me. It's going to go to a committee of people on my Discord who will check. And if one comes in, but given how pessimistic Tony is, and given that this new proof stopped right before it, it's seemingly very unlikely one will exist. But surely, before the 10th anniversary of the Parker Square, which is in two years' time, $10,000 will we'll be able to flush one of these out of the works. I will just warn people that there's one trap, because a lot of people will think they've found it where they end up um, thinking they've got a solution, but they haven't. And so I've got a warning for that. Check out number file two for the short video with Matt where he explains the pitfall, the trap you might fall into. There'll be links to that down below. There'll also be links to Matt's books. Have you read any of his books? They're really good, you know. And also Matt's YouTube channel, Stand Up Maths, and of course our long and growing catalog of videos about the Parker Square and Magic Squares, all that good stuff. You can also get Parker Square t-shirts, by the way. Did I tell you about those? Links below. Square glasses, but I like it. It's a, it's a, it, it's a semi-magic square with repeated entries and it's got square numbers in it and my well, fine. Has it got a name? <laughs> that hasn't got a name. I, I don't want to call it the Parker Square because it doesn't work properly. Everyone would be like, oh, the, oh that's a well, classic Parker Square. Or if someone would do something that's almost right but not quite, and they go, that's a real Parker Square kind of move. So I'm not calling it the Parker Square. Matt, you know what this video is I'm called. I'm calling it, oh, for crying out loud. Yeah. <laughs>